This proof illustrates and introduces the wedge in rule. Wedge in is really my favorite proof rule. It's a super creative, very powerful, and a kind of fun rule to use. It has two versions, and in both versions, you can take any formula and you can add to it anything that you'd like as long as you add a wedge between the two parts. So in other words, take any formula P and then just pull a Q out of the air and stick it next to the P. You can add it after P or you can add it before P. It works either way. Now I know this looks a little strange. Let's see just how strange it is. Here's an example in English, my favorite, my favorite sort of silly example. Our premise, the P part, is that the prince is handsome. All right, if that's true, then it follows that either the prince is handsome or that the queen smokes crack. This, in fact, is a valid argument. Now, we know the definition of validity. The definition says that if the premise is true, then the conclusion has to be true. Well, notice that this definitely fits that definition, and it's all about the meaning of the word or. When you say this or that, because the or is inclusive, what you're saying is that at least one of these is true. And if it's true that the prince is handsome, well, then at least one half of this sentence is true. That's exactly what's going on in both of these patterns. P or Q means at least one part is true. Well, if P is true, then at least one half of this is true, namely the P. So it doesn't matter what Q is. The pattern makes really good sense, and this argument, the fact that it's valid, does make good sense. But I also know it looks kind of crazy. Why does it look kind of crazy? I'm convinced that the reason is, is because we never hear anybody argue this way in the real world. And the reason we don't, I believe, is because it goes from strength to weakness. That's my theory. When you assert a relative, when you assert a simple sentence, that's a relatively strong thing to do. You're just saying, here's a true sentence. The prince is handsome. But when you assert a wedge statement, there's some ambiguity. If I say the prince is handsome or the queen smokes crack, well, then it's unclear which half of it is supposed to be the true half. Maybe it's that the prince is handsome is true, or maybe it's true that the queen smokes crack, or maybe they're both true, but there's an, a type of ambiguity in what I'm asserting. So to go from a simple sentence to a wedge statement is actually to go from strength to weakness, and that's a not a normal way to argue. However, let's get this odd argument out of the way here and let's construct our proof. Okay, so let's see how to use this entertaining rule. We start at the top. Line 1 has an arrow as its main connective, so we know that we say to ourselves, if I could find A or B on a line by itself, then I could write D. Hey, there's an A. Well, notice, you might say, in terms of the meaning, that this says if you can find A or B, then you can write D, so there's A, so I should write D. But, of course, in the way that a proof works, I have to literally have A wedge B on another line. Well, this is where wedge in comes in. On line 4, I am actually now going to write... Oh, come on, pencil. You know how to write, don't you? I am actually here on line 4, I am going to write A wedge B. Now where is this A wedge B coming from? It's not coming from line 1. Line 1 is the inspiration for me to create A wedge B. But what I'm really doing is taking line 3 and I'm just wedging in a B. And so my justification is going to say 3 wedge in. Notice this makes good sense. This is a one-line rule, and so it's obvious why I should be able to add this um, according to this rule. Let's compare this, what I've just done, to something else that you all clearly know how to do. 
If you saw A ampersand B arrow C on a line in your proof, and then on line 2 you saw A, and on 3 you saw B, what would you write on 4? Well, you'd put them together and create A ampersand B, and the justification would be 2, 3 ampersand N. Line 1 inspires you to build the ampersand. But line 4 doesn't come out of line 1. It comes from 2 and 3, and you built it using the creative rule ampersand N. That's the same thing that's going on over here. It's just that wedges are much easier to build than ampersands. Okay, well, fantastic. You should never do a creative rule unless you know exactly why you're doing it, but we know why we did this. Because we look at line 1, and now we can do the arrow out. If you have A or B on another line by itself, and we do, then you can write D. So we shall. And the justification, of course, is going to be 1, 4, arrow out. Whenever you need to build a wedge, all you have to have is one half or the other. And with that in mind, we'll now look at line 2. If I could find E wedge D on a line by itself, then I could write G. Ah, to build a wedge, all I need is one half or the other. And here's the D half. So what am I going to get to write on line 6? I will write E wedge D. Because you can wedge into the back side, or if you need to, you can wedge into the front side. And that's what we're doing in this case. Where did this E wedge D come from? Did it come from line 2? No, 2 is merely the inspiration. And then I see the D on line 5, and I say, ah, great, I can pull an E out of thin air and stick it in front of my D. 5 wedge in is the justification. Well, I know why I did that. It's so I could do the arrow out, and on 7, I can get G. And that would be 2, 6 arrow out. Okay, now I have a G. Do you see that we're actually done with the proof at this point? Because look at my conclusion. It's H or G or M. Well, I could build this whole thing if I had one half or the other. Well, I don't have an H any place. Do I have G wedge M? Well, I have a G. So on line 8, I can build G wedge M. I just wedge in the M, 7 wedge in, and now that I've got G wedge M, I can wedge in the H and get 8 wedge in. Wedge in, a super creative, very fun, entertaining rule. If you're worried that it's too powerful, take a look here at wedge out. Wedge in is a very friendly rule. Wedge out is its uh, sort of evil cousin. And wedge out is what keeps you from being, from wedge in from being too powerful. 